Now let's have a look at the main cooking area. So the first key thing we need is our shelf. So this is our drop down worktop, which is actually quite a reasonable size. Lashed into here, direct access. So we pop this out. Obviously we need our utensils. In here we have our kitchen. Designed specifically for us, this kitchen unit was built because Belinda had difficulty reaching into the hire box that we used in the trip to Tunisia. So the sides are deliberately low to make it easy to access from the side and it also allows us to slip things in. So we've made best use of some of the collapsible things. You've already seen this collapsible sink. In here, we've also used nets at the front here to hold in saucepans, and we have two saucepans in the front, uh, frying pan with a screw on handle at the back, plates. Uh, some of the taller bottles go in here, so that's the squash, uh, vegetable oils, or olive oil. We also kept hold of this, we used this in Tunisia. Um, and what we found is very, very useful, but we, we kept it in here even though we've got the, the silicon sink because what we decided was this was actually quite good for carrying wet laundry backwards and forwards and, and other bits and pieces, so extremely useful. Again, this is a, an Ortlieb one, we got, I got this from uh, Cotswold. Um, in the bottom we also, very, very difficult to get hold of, but again, um, just things like bowls, uh, silicon bowls, but this one was from Asda, would you believe? Uh, very hard, but they're quite difficult to get hold of. Um, for a, a long run, the, the kettle does go inside here, but uh, when we're on the road, we just keep it held in here so it's nice and easy to access. Okay, um, there's a full width griddle that was bought, to us as a, bought for us as a present, uh, chopping board. Uh, toaster. Linda likes it. Gluten-free bread is best eaten toasted, if eaten at all. Um, so toaster. Uh, and all the usuals, cleaning things, washing up, uh, bowls, etc. All held in here. So this is basically the kitchen utensils, uh, the kitchen cupboards, etc. We found this to be very, very effective. Access this, pull out slider, okay, unzip the cover. These covers, again, this was second hand, we got this at billing 15 foot, 50 pounds. They are 100 pounds, they do hold the temperature. UK, very from UK to Spain, the temperature in this unit only rose by one degree, and that's quite remarkable. And again, just direct access into there. Directly beneath the fridge, 
we have some more of our really useful motors. This first one, with the front here. So what do we have in our food containers? Okay. An awful lot of what we've done is we made sure that when we went away on a trip that we had sufficient food for breakfast and an evening meal for every single day. Because Belinda is celiac, she needs gluten-free food, basically everything we've got here, with the exception of breakfast cereals, is all gluten-free. The vast majority of what we have is pre-packed meals. These are from a company called Look What We Found, but Asda also do them, Tesco's and Variety. They don't require refrigeration, they're really quite tasty, and we found them to be quite good. What we did was we felt that endlessly having stuff like that each night was going to get a bit monotonous. So we broke the meals down into three basic types. There are those that go with rice, those that go with pasta, and those that go with sort of a mashed potato. So, instant mashed potato mix. What we also did was a pack here with <coughs> oil in the bag rice. Right, individual portions so we know exactly what we're cooking again makes life easy and we also did the same thing for the pasta only in this case what we did was we actually measured them ourselves and broke them down into a, a two-person serving in sandwich bag. so again it was nice, nice and easy nice and quick now if we wanted to spend time we could buy local ingredients and we could make more of a culinary uh, effort out of it However, quite often, arrive at campsite, you just simply want something that's tasty, quick and easy. So we try to go for maximum convenience by breaking things down. Chocolate biscuits, crackers, um, once again, specifically gluten-free bread. Requirements enough for the entire time. Fortunately, it has a good shelf life. Um, soups, uh, tinned meats, various bits and pieces, little snacks for on the way. Breakfast cereal, we found uh, these ideal containers that fit within. Uh, gluten free rolls, so a wide range of stuff, but effectively we had sufficient stocks for the entire 20 days. The second container basically holds very, very similar. Um, In here were a few more luxury items, Pringles, kitchen wrap, tinned meats, uh, more of the, the packet foods, uh, also some uh, mini poppadons, and in the bottom here, tinned potatoes, uh, tinned veg, things that we could bulk up the, the packets with, baked beans, thick soup, single meal in a tin very very worthwhile um, certainly when I when we had our problems in Spain I found it very easy to be able to just pull one thing out put it into a uh, saucepan heat it and have a meal very very quickly again not a lot of messing about so breakfast in a tin uh, big soups chunky things individual things for emergency situations when you just need to eat on the run be prepared for a little bit prepared for. We didn't realise how much we were going to need. It. <coughs> okay. Let's pack things away. Very very straightforward. necessary but you do find with some of these that you do get a bit of a rattle so 
though we found it just helps muffle. Once again, the quieter you can make your car, the better it is when you're hammering along endless motorways to get to the more interesting places. The last thing you really want is rattles, chinks and bangs. Okay, once this is done, 